Welcome to another Batik Walla painting video. Okay, I am starting on this t-shirt, but where I drew the original outline for this tree mandala is in the wrong spot, so I'm just retracing it in a new area because I want it a little lower on the shirt. And I'm using a washable marker. Yeah, that will wash out when I'm done, when I'm finished with the this batik. Okay, so this is this pen, this batik pen is called a Chanting. I think that's how you pronounce it. And it is a special tool designed specifically for painting hot beeswax onto fabric. And it's spelled T J A N T I N G. And you can actually purchase them on the internet. I'll put a link in the comments where um, there's different styles. There's, there are different kinds. The one I'm using, I actually made from a tool that I found. And then I modified it for my own preference, my painting style. Because it's um, I just need a longer handle than the one that I could find. So I actually took the copper tip off and I um, fastened it onto a paintbrush handle. And that's why mine looks a little bit different. But there are different types of tools out there. Right now I'm painting the actual tree. And it's just a freehand style of tree. I'm not really planting the branches. I'm drawing them out based on what I think would look nice. Each one's different, so I just wing it each time I paint the tree. Paint half on one side and then I start over on the other side and draw out the branches. So everywhere that I'm painting with this pen, that will create an outline, a little batik waxy outline in white, which is the base color of this t-shirt. So we're almost done getting each branch in. And there we go. Get a moon in there and a star, probably two. And maybe even another one if I can fit another one in there. Okay, so I'm starting on the roots right now. And again, it's just freehand. So each set of roots is different. The plan is that this t-shirt is going to go into purple. Here's my third star, yay! We have the tree painted out, and now I'm using a paintbrush to do the sun rays. And just drawing them out one at a time. Whatever matches with another ray, I will just add them together. And then here I'm starting on a different section of the sun just to keep it even so that the rays just don't lean too much on one side. I don't always do this, but it does kind of break up the, the designs into sections and it does ensure that there's sort of an even balance of direction for the rays. Here I am starting in the center. So I'll go back and fill those other sections in later. I don't always do it this way, but lately I have been doing this, especially with the longer rays. You do want to make sure that your design is even. Just 
using a regular paintbrush, a watercolor brush, basically, sable. And in fact, all of the batiks I used to do, I only used a paintbrush. You don't actually need to use the pen. The pen is just a little bit more advanced. Okay, there's the close-up. Now I'm filling in the shape around the tree so that it really brings that color and that design out. So everywhere I'm painting, that will stay white and the beeswax will crackle and you'll have that really pretty batik effect underneath. It's... Um, it is kind of, it is natural. It has an organic look to it, which is what I love so much about beeswax, especially when you do a full immersion. And what I mean by full immersion is that the entire t-shirt is going to go into the dye bath. And I'm not painting the dye on. I'll be uh, sinking the entire piece into the dye and it will soak. And so the beeswax is perfect for that. It will resist the water, but it does crackle. And that's where you get those really amazing detail lines. So we're going around. And I'm moving pretty quickly with my paintbrush because I need to keep that temperature consistent from the skillet to the cot. If I let the wax sit on that brush for any, even just a second longer, it's gonna be too cool to paint. It'll paint, but it might not sink into the fabric and then you will not get a good resist. And that's why you see me moving that paper so quickly. I really wanna keep that temperature consistent with the melted wax, which is right above melting. I don't have the wax too hot. But if it's too cool, it's not going to work. And also it has just the right consistency for getting into these detail spots. If it's too hot, you're going to miss those details. The wax will spread too quickly and not resist very effectively. Okay, here we go. Here's the beeswax before it's melted. That's what it looks like. And now I'm going to show you the inside of the shirt so you can see what I mean about it sinking all the way through. And now you know you'll get a good, sorry, that hanger is like swinging. And see how the beeswax saturated the fiber and sank through. And it is nice and cool now, cool to the touch. And there is the design. I finished tree. Isn't that pretty? All right. Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.